Hey, what's up YouTube's Meander here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 2015 edition. All new for this year is the latest Intel Broadwell U processors, a redesigned trackpad with physical buttons, and you get physical buttons for your function row keys, unlike last year's model, which was capacitive. All right, let's go and kick out this review. The third generation X1 Carbon is all new for 2015. You get the thinnest and lightest 14 inch Ultrabook out there. The pricing starts at $1199 US for the base configuration, and can go all the way up to 2919 US for the fully loaded configuration. The model I have here is the base Core i5 with 4GB of RAM. The only way to get 8GB of RAM is to go all the way up to the Core i7 model. I also have the upgraded Quad HD touchscreen panel and the 256GB SSD. This model retails for $1699 US. You can also configure it with the all new Samsung PCIe SSDs for better performance. After many complaints from last year's X1 Carbon, let's see if Lenovo got it right this year. On the exterior, you got a carbon fiber lid that looks stunning. It also feels very durable. The bottom cover and palm rest is made out of magnesium alloy, which feels pretty durable as well. Overall, the design and build quality of the new X1 Carbon has been great. The keyboard flex is good. As you can see here, the keyboard barely budges. That doesn't surprise me at all since ThinkPads are usually well built. There are three variations of the 14 inch display to choose from. The first is a Full HD TN panel with 300 nits. The second is a Quad HD IPS panel with 300 nits. And the third, which I have here, is a Quad HD IPS panel with touchscreen, which Lenovo claims 270 nits of brightness. I have been highly impressed with the panel. The color saturations, contrast ratios, and black levels look stunning. Now is it the best panel on the market in terms of color accuracy? No. But the overall display performance has been excellent. The brightness levels have definitely been improved. That was one of my biggest cons for the 2014 edition X1 Carbon. Next up, let's take a look at our Spider 4 Pro colorimeter results. For the Adobe sRGB, I got a score of 85%. And for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 65%. With these kind of scores, you can expect good color saturation on this panel. If you plan on buying a new X1 Carbon 2015 edition, then I would recommend getting at least the Quad HD version, since both of the Quad HDs are based on the IPS technology. The viewing angles on the new Quad HD IPS panels has been great. Take a look at this angle here. It is still very visible. For those of you that like to share your presentations with your coworkers, you're definitely going to enjoy the wider viewing angles on this panel. Here goes something pretty cool. This panel also tilts all the way down. Oh, another nice bonus to this panel is the anti-smudge coating, which acts like an anti-reflective coating, blocking out most of the glare. The touchscreen performance of the 14 inch Quad HD panel has been great. Whether I'm swiping or doing multi-touch gestures, the response has been excellent. The only downsides here, it'll set you back $350 for the touchscreen panel. If you don't need the touchscreen, I would just get the 14 inch Quad HD for an additional $150 US. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here goes your AC charging port. Next to it is your Lenovo One Link connection port, where you can get an external dock for around $179 US. Full size HDMI port, mini display port, and always on USB 3.0 port and your headset microphone jack combo. On the back side, you got your micro SIM card tray. On the right side, you got your security lock slot, exhaust port for your fan, ethernet extension connection port, and a USB 3.0 port. And the sad thing here is there is no SD card reader. Come on, Lenovo, please give us one. And for those of you that like to use the ethernet port, Lenovo is also including an ethernet extension adapter inside the box. One of my favorite things about this laptop is the keyboard. This keyboard has been a pleasure to type on. I would even go out to say it, this is one of the best laptop keyboards I have ever tested, especially for a laptop so thin and light. The tactile feedback and key travel has been excellent. For you business users on the go that spend most of your day on a laptop, you're definitely gonna appreciate the keyboard on this laptop. And yes, this keyboard is backlit. There are two options. The first option we have here is our low, followed by our high setting. I like this backlit keyboard because it is extremely easy to read and easy on the eyes for those of you that like to type late at night. There are three status LED indicators on this keyboard. The first one is your volume mute, second one is your microphone mute, and the third one is your function lock. The only downside here is there is no caps lock LED indicator. The 2015 X1 Carbon also features a 720p webcam. Let's go and see how it performs. Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here. Today I'm doing a webcam test on the 2015 X1 Carbon. Let me know what you think about the quality in the comments down below. The Lenovo Fingerprint Manager Pro did give me a couple of issues out of the box. It simply wouldn't load up. To resolve that, I just went to Lenovo.com and downloaded the latest version of Fingerprint Manager Pro, then I was good from there. To set up your fingerprint reader, simply select the finger you want to program. I'm going to select my index finger and simply swipe here a couple of times to register. Now we're going to log in with our fingerprint. Just go ahead and swipe, and boom, we're logging in. The fingerprint reader for the most part was pretty accurate. However, occasionally I will have to re-swipe. One of the major complaints to last year's model was the capacitive function row key button. This year, those are all gone and now replaced by physical buttons. Let's go and test these out and see how they perform. Starting from the left is our escape key, mute button, volume down, volume up, microphone mute button, brightness down button, brightness up, 
external display option button. Next up is our Wi-Fi button, followed by your settings menu, your search, multitasking tray, and your all applications menu. Overall, having the physical buttons compared to the capacitive buttons of last year's version feels much better. One of the biggest changes to the 2015 X1 Carbon is the trackpad. This year you get a smooth silky surface, three physical buttons, and best of all, it just works. Take a look at this two finger scrolling here. It's very sensitive, look at this. My only con on this trackpad is the multi-touch gestures are not very smooth compared to the touchscreen. And with physical buttons on your trackpad now, you can simply right click or left click on an application with ease. The track point is also highly responsive. Overall, Lenovo did a great job with all new trackpad and track point. This laptop features an Intel Core i5-5200U, which is based on the Broadway architecture. You get a base clock speed of 2.2 GHz, with a turbo boost up to 2.7 GHz. Compared to the previous Haswell i5-4200U, there's not a big increase in performance. However, you should expect at least a 5-15% to increase. The biggest performance you're going to get is efficiency. Whether you're browsing the web, watching Netflix, programming code, or even editing 1080p video clips, the i5-5200U was up to the challenge. For our Geekbench 364-bit version, the single-core performance came in at 2,820, and for the multi-core performance, it came in at 5,510. For PC Mark 8 Home Conventional, I got a score of 2,151. And for Cinebench R15 CPU performance, I got a score of 254 CB. These are some pretty good scores for an Intel Core i5 processor. With that being said, if you want the best performance, I would upgrade to the Intel Core i7-5600U. That one is clocked at 2.6 GHz, with a turbo boost up to 3.2 GHz. And the bonus is, you also get 8GB of RAM with that configuration. Next up, let's talk about the Intel HD 5500. This is the successor to the previous Intel HD 4400. And this is what Broadwell is all about. Many of my benchmarks have shown the Intel HD 5500 as being at least 20% faster than the previous Intel HD 4400. Now let's take a look at some benchmarks. For Firestrike, I got a score of 668. For Skydiver, I got a score of 2498. For Cloudgate, I got a score of 4721. And for Storm Extreme, I got a score of 32771. Our next test, the Cinemage R15 OpenGL test, I got a score of 26.85 frames per second. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play some of today's games like Bioshock Infinite, The Sims 3 and 4, and Diablo 3 for example, on very low settings. For gaming performance, I would recommend lowering your resolution to 1600 by 900 or lower depending on your game. Now I'm going to give you a demo of Bioshock Infinite in action at 1366 by 768 on very low settings. Oh, you better leave her alone. Get off her. So far the game is running at around 20 to 25 frames per second. For the most part, I'm getting around 30 frames per second during the less intense action scenes. Let me reload my weapon and take this guy out. Get down! Yeah, you don't want none of this. Uh oh. No! Yeah, you better get down. Get off me. Battery life on the all-new 2015 X1 Carbon has been pretty good. On average, I'm able to get anywhere from 8.5 to 9.5 hours out of full charge with screen brightness at around 70%. That's pretty good thanks to the all-new Intel Broadwell processors. The performance from the 256GB Samsung M.2 SSD has been quick, with the exception of the right speed. For the best performance, I would get the Samsung PCIe upgrade. Based on my test with the 512GB Samsung PCIe on the Retina MacBook Pro, the read and write speeds were around 700MB a second, which is breathtaking. Out of the box, you're left with around 192GB free out of the 256GB SSD. The Broadwell U processors have been extremely efficient. On average, the CPU temperatures were around 41 to 42 degrees Celsius, with a high of up to 62 degrees Celsius during 30 minutes of Minecraft gameplay. For those of you that are worried about the 4GB of RAM on the base model, I went ahead and performed the browser tab test using Firefox. I had 7 tabs of heavy web pages open and 1 tab of YouTube video playing. With 8 tabs simultaneously open at the same time, the physical memory load was around 67%. So yes, the 4GB of RAM may seem very low, but with light multitasking, you'll get by. With that being said, if you plan on doing a lot of multitasking, then you better get the 8GB of RAM. Here goes a shot of the internal components of the new X1 Carbon 2015 edition. Wow, looks like the battery takes most of the space inside here. Here goes our single fan. The fan noise levels on this laptop has been whisper quiet almost. I've been impressed by the fan noise levels. This is one of the quietest laptops I have ever tested. Even under heavy load, you can barely hear the fan running. You can thank the engineers at Lenovo and the all new Broadwell U processors. There goes your M.2 256GB Samsung SSD. Oh by the way, you can also upgrade to a PCIe SSD later on down the road followed by the all-new Intel Dual Band Wireless AC7265, which is the successor to the Intel Dual Band Wireless AC7260. The performance and range of the new AC7265 has been great. I have not experienced any hiccups with the all-new wireless card. The sound quality from the two bottom-facing speakers were meh. I just wish Lenovo would have put a better quality set in here. That would have made it the ultimate ultra-portable notebook. And just to give you an idea of how it sounds, here goes a quick test on the speakers on the all-new X1 Carbon 2015 edition.
This completes my full review on the all-new Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon 2015 Edition. You get an excellent keyboard as well as an excellent trackpad with physical buttons, and you get the latest Broadwell U processors. The only downsides are there's not an SD card reader and the less than average speaker quality. Besides that, this is one of the best Ultrabooks I've ever tested. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.